Wow, oh wow, what a game. Perhaps the game of the year for the Indiana Pacers. They go into Golden State, missing their entire expected starting five for before the season, beat the Warriors, win a close game. All the rookies looked awesome. It was amazing. Lots to talk about on today's Locked On Pacers podcast. <laughs> You are Locked On Pacers, your daily Indiana Pacers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Pacers podcast, where we, of course, talk about the Indiana Pacers as always. My name's Tony East. I cover the team for Forbes and the West Side Community News. And today, wow, oh wow, do we have a fun game to talk about with so many crazy storylines to talk about. I mean, it, but before the game, if you told me the Pacers won a close game, that alone I would have been said, nah, you know, I don't believe you. If they beat the Warriors, I would not have believed you. If you told me they beat the Warriors without Miles Turner, without DeMontis Sabonis, without Karis Silver, without Malcolm Brogdon, without TJ Warren, I would not have believed you at all. But they won. The Pacers pulled it off. It was one of their most impressive wins of the season, led by the reserves, led by some rookies, led by guys who don't typically play. It was very impressive. We're going to talk about this game, the big moments, how the Pacers were able to pull it off, uh, and then pivot, talk about the young guys, big games from basically every guy who you'd consider young or potentially, maybe not even for sure on some of these guys, but potentially part of the next good Pacers team. Basically, basically all of them played well. And I want to talk about every single one of them. At the end, this was the most extended run we got in one game with both Chris Duarte and Isaiah Jackson, the Pacers' two first-round picks in the court at the same time. Talk about how those minutes have gone and those two players in general as they really blossomed in this game. But the game in general is always the story. And what a game it was. Final score is 121-117. Pacers take down the Warriors. Steph had 39 and looked dynamic the entire game. He had six threes, nine free throws, and hit 12 shots. And the rest of the Warriors were not very good because the Pacers' defense was pretty solid in this game. Despite giving up 117, they did a good job smothering a lot of other guys. They got their hands on a lot of steals. They had 12 of those. They did well protecting the paint around the basket. Right? They only gave up, uh, excuse me, uh, 62 points in the paint, including overtime. That's pretty good against the Warriors team that drives like crazy, crazy, crazy. Right? The Pacers' defense was really good despite not having all their starters. Justin Holiday played a solid defensive game. Torrey Craig did. Goga was excellent, excellent on defense in this game. Chris Duarte was good at the point of attack. Kiefer Sykes was good on, at the, on defense in this game. Most Chamber, everybody was good on defense in this game. These guys, the reserves for the Pacers, despite their limitations and being worse than the starters who typically play, they are all good point of attack defenders or better, at least, point-of-attack defenders than some of these starters. And that was on display tonight. They actually did a pretty good job containing the Warriors for portions of this game. There are some weak POA defenders in this group, like Jeremy Lamb and Lance Stevenson. But in general, they played very, very good defense for a lot of this game. And that was key for the Pacers to slowing down a Golden State team that has a dynamic offense. They end up shooting only 21% from deep, 44.7% from the field in general. Really impressive defensive performance from this Pacers group. And it's it's hard to under, overstate and understate how good the Pacers were, even only winning by four, just given the personnel they had. Like, their starting five was Kiefer Sykes, Chris Duarte, Torrey Craig, Justin Holiday, and Goga Batadze. That group's never started before together. That group's barely. That group hasn't even played together before tonight. Their bench consisted of Dwayne Washington and Isaiah Jackson getting rotation minutes. I mean, th th those lineups did not exist very much before the today and yet there they are out there playing toe to toe with a team that has title aspirations and looking very good doing it and basically every single player stepped up in this game outside of maybe one guy who had an off night right justin holiday four for nine from deep and we'll talk about he had maybe the biggest moment of the game at the end for 16 points tory craig hits half of his shots and plays excellent defense and has seven rebounds goga batadze continues his run of excellent play, and he'll be a sub a lot of topics about Goga Batadze on this podcast in the coming weeks because, you know, with Sabonis and Turner both out, he starts at center, and he'll probably be playing heavy minutes a lot. He played 31 minutes in this game, but despite getting ejected in the middle of the fourth quarter, he finished with 13, 9, and 5, right? He looked really good. He was controlling the game, getting offensive rebounds, battling in the post. He played fantastic. This was one of the... Outside of Monday's game, maybe this was one of the best Goga games I've ever seen. And it was his first time over 30 minutes in a game in forever. That was very good to see Goga play 
at that level if you're the Pacers. You want to see him continue to grow and be that good young player. We'll talk more about him in the next segment. Duarte ties his career high with 27 points. He also had seven boards and three assists. Key for Sykes, the rookie, 10 points from him in this game along with three assists as he starts. Brissett was the lone guy who was kind of clunky. He was 0 for 7, but he still had six rebounds and played solid defense. Lance had a bit of an off night as well. Only four points for him. Jeremy Lamb was huge again. Right, Rick Carlisle has been quick to credit him uh, after both of the last two games. He had 14 points. Dwayne Washington had eight points, uh, and they were all in like a really quick burst. And then Isaiah Jackson. I mean, Duarte might be the story of the game. Isaiah might be. I don't know. You could pick a lot of guys. I would pick Isaiah Jackson. Isaiah Jackson, his his biggest one of his biggest minute games of his career, plays 18 and a half minutes, 15 points, seven rebounds, three steals. His hands were everywhere. Gets to the line for eight free throw attempts. It was awesome to see him play this much because he hasn't played much in his whole career. They need him as the backup center with all these guys out, and he looked fantastic on defense. He was everywhere, everywhere, everywhere on the defensive end of the floor, getting his arms in passing lanes, deflecting passes, getting all over guys when they would shoot around the rim. His offense was good. He was diving and, and cutting everywhere. This was his most minutes played in the game in his NBA career, and he supremely looked the most effective he's ever looked. His lob threats were off the charts. He had three or four dunks in this game. He took a three. I mean, he had five threes with Fort Wayne last week. It's not crazy to think he should be shooting threes. He only took one, but he looked, he was everywhere, and he just runs like a guard, and he's so tall and long that he. it's so obvious that he's going to be this athletic, dynamic freak when he gets better and grows into his body a little more in the NBA. Will he ever have ball handling skills or shooting skills? Who knows? But already right now, if he can play like this and just refine the skills he currently has while bulking up, that's already a potentially decent player. He had to play in all of crunch time in this game because Goga uh, got ejected and all the centers were out. So he plays a ton when it matters and was very good in those minutes, right? Him stepping up was a huge part of the Pacers getting this win. So that was everybody. I basically just listed the entire team. Every single player stepped up for the Pacers in this game and played up to the level that they're capable of. The rookies were all fantastic. 60 points combined for the Pacers' four rookies between Sykes, Washington, Duarte, and Jackson in this game. And there were some huge moments that led to this as well, beyond just individuals stepping up. Pacers were down three right at the end. Steph, I believe what it was, uh, hit some free throws late in the fourth and, and put the Pacers down by three uh, with, with 9.4 seconds to go. And they get it in. On a little bit of a broken inbound, not really. They were still in the set, but it took what, a second to get it in. They get it to Isaiah Jackson. He turns. He finds Justin Holiday, who just turns and immediately takes a three with still time on the clock. And the reason for that is the Warriors could have fouled and made it so the shot doesn't get up. So you want to just take it if you're open from three. Holiday lets it fly and drills it. Ties the game with six seconds left. An absolutely huge shot. And the Pacers get the stop at the end to send it to overtime. Right, That was a huge shot from Justin Holiday, who's been inconsistent all season. But in this magical fun night for the Pacers, he was on the money. He was the guy he was last season playing good defense and hitting huge shots. That was a massive bucket from Justin Holiday. Good read from Isaiah Jackson. And smart from the Pacers to get it up quick, knowing that if they wait, a foul might come and then it could go the other way. And then in overtime, right, the Warriors and Pacers battling back and forth. Warriors are up uh, after two minutes. We hit two minute mark to go in the game. It's tied at 115. And then Key versus Sykes, quiet game. He's only had five points up to this point in the entire game, despite playing uh, over 30 minutes, steps up and just scores a casual five points in about 40 seconds to give the Pacers a five-point lead down the stretch when it mattered. He had a, a three from the parking lot with a minute 41 to go, and then he drove to the basket with a minute to go to give the Pacers a five-point lead. Warriors had a chance to tie it with the ball. They couldn't do it. Pacers able to get it done with Jeremy Lamb at the line to clinch it, and he missed one of the two free throws to clinch it, which meant it was a four-point margin. So I can no longer boast to the 1-12 in four-point game stat. They are now 2-12 in four-point games. But some huge moments from Keeper Sykes and Justin Holiday to ice this game because the Warriors had plenty of opportunities to win. I mean, they, they kind of gave it away. Honestly, they'll be kicking themselves. Steph was excellent, but no one else stepped up. So this is, I mean, the Pacers have had a three-game win streak this season that once in early December. But the, I mean, this back-to-back -back wins, I mean, against the Lakers and Warriors is – one of the most impressive stretches of this sunken Pacers season. So say what you will about this team and how poorly they've played this year and, and what their priorities should be going forward to the trade deadline in a couple weeks. Games like this, right? Basketball is awesome. Not trades, not player movement. I had so much fun watching this team tonight, watching guys step up into new roles, watching this team problem solve against a championship caliber team and get it done. It was just absolutely awesome. And the Pacers now have a chance to tie 
their longest win streak this weekend as their road trip continues. So hugely impressive win for this basketball team. They, they'll have to carry that momentum going forward into their next game. I want to talk about the young guys in particular. And I just talked about everybody's stat line and everybody stepping up. But a lot of young guys deserve praise for how they played in this game because this is the game that you know the Pacers can point to and go, this is, the, this is what we want from the future of some of this team. And how do you build around that, right? So let's do that. But first, guys, let's take a short little break to talk about the good folks over at betonline.ag who would like to wish you a new Happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond divisional round of the NFL playoffs coming right up. Bet online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year, new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on all one word to get started from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online is where the game starts. What a night from the Pacers, young guys. Let's talk about all of them. I mean, they all deserve some love. And thank you all for making Lockdown Pacers your first listen every single day. I do not like when games go to overtime that start at 10 p.m. and now it's 2 a.m. and I'm talking about the Pacers and I have work in the morning. But you know what I do like is talking about Fun games from young players that the Pacers will have to consider in their retool, rebuild, whatever. I don't want to talk about trades at all. I want to talk about how young guys performed in this game. And these guys are going to be playing a lot more going forward with Sabonis and Turner on the shelf. We saw Gogo Batadze start in this game. He played 31 minutes in 21 seconds. His previous high in minutes for this season was the 24 minutes that he ended up playing on Monday against the Clippers, ironically. So his minutes distribution rocketing up uh, in this opportunity. And he... Completely took advantage. What Goga did so well that he has been kind of critiqued for a lot in his career is he was just really physical and bulky and looked more like a bruiser than a finesse kind of really good positioner and rotator and defender that he was kind of lauded to be coming into the draft. In this game, when he was on the inside, he was banging with guys, whoever it was, going up hard for rebounds, going for those blocks, trying to get those steals, finishing around the rim. Still not not afraid of taking the long-range shot, one for four from deep. And it always looks like it's going in, as I've maintained for two seasons. It never does, but it always looks like it's going to. But he was definitely more of an enforcer role in this game. And I think he'll have to be that if he's playing permanent center for 30 minutes a game. But he just filled up the stat sheet and was everywhere and making life hell, frankly, for the words. I mean, he set the tone in this game, right? Goga had 10 points I think three rebounds, one assist, and a block in the first quarter. He had 10 points in the first quarter. The Pacers only scored 23 in the first frame. They were down at halftime, but Gogo was their leading scorer for much of the first half because he was doing so well at the beginning of the game of, okay, they're putting a small guy on me. Great, I can be an enforcer. Oh, okay, I can go under the rim and use the rim as a defender here because they have a small on me. Great, I can do that. Oh, okay, all of a sudden I have this really easy baby hook. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, I got four offensive rebounds all of a sudden. Like he just was doing all the stuff that Goga needs to do that in the past, right, he, he's been an okay rebounder before, but he hasn't just quite had that strength. He's been more a little bit finessey inside. And, you know, something that has always bugged me about Goga when I watch him is I can tell he understands what he's supposed to do all the time in processing the game, but it takes him a split second longer than it needs to, and he's not quite in the right – like he'll get to the position a little late. He was always really big on fouls because of that, because he would just be a split second late tonight. He was really crisp in his rotations, understood where he needed to be on the floor, was reading the game really well. It was one of the better Goga performances that, frankly, we've ever seen. I mean, Monday's game, notwithstanding, because that was his best game of his career, but it was a very impressive Goga performance, plus three in his 31 minutes with the other centers out. I mean, they need more games like that. It was very impressive for Goga to do that. And then, you know, it's funny that I go with him first, because they tell us to play the hits here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Talk about the stuff. The big important stuff and the big important stuff for the Pacers from taking away from this game is with all their starters out, they needed someone to step up and be the guy who's going to be the guy who can score the ball, who's going to be tough to guard, who's going to get you points against a championship caliber team. If you're going to win, someone's going to have to do that. How about your rookie, right? Who would have thought Chris Duarte takes 16 shots, drills 10 of them, hits two of his three threes, hits five free throws, 27 points, tying his career high which came in his very first game ironically when he hit six threes in this one it was not all threes he was showing off a variety of bucket getting skills right something he talked about a couple games ago that I'm going to write about and I didn't I wanted to tweet this quote 
in this clip, but I forgot is I asked him about him driving all the way to the rim. That's something he's been doing instead of pulling up in the mid range because he's not the best at creating like a ton of space, but he creates just enough on the attack to the mid range that I've always thought if he could just keep going, he might create a little more separation in this game. He did a good job of getting closer to the basket before shooting before taking the shot. And that allowed him to be really effective. And he called when I asked him about that, he said, they're trying to teach me to do that more often. He called mid range jail. He doesn't want to be shooting from jail. He wants to get to the rim, take those threes, get the spots where he can draw fouls. And in this game, he was that dynamic create shots for himself off the bounce kind of guy in tandem with Goga. First of all, that was huge. To see in tandem with Isaiah Jackson, that was huge to see. We'll talk about that duo in the next segment. But you know, this is like this is what the the peak Duarte thought is is like. Oh wow, this could be the off the dribble go to guy for this Pacers team in their next iteration. I don't know that he can be every night, but he certainly has enough games where he is impressive as an off the bounce score to make you think, wow, maybe this guy can be you know, maybe not a number one option on a very good team, but a, a pretty high up option because he can create his own shots, doesn't necessarily need a screen all the time, can hit tough shots with a defender's hand in his face. And by the way, Duarte's defense was once again pretty good in this game. He remains a very nosy on the ball defender, and it's very impressive. So he played uh, just a, an absolutely fantastic game. He was beaming with smiles in his post game media session. It was it was fun to see. Everybody said the locker room vibe was awesome. And for Goga going forward, you know, just more games being the enforcer. You know, if he's going to be the backup center, if a center has moved or something, I mean, it's important that he has more games like that. I mean, that's what the center position needs to be sometimes. Not all the time necessarily, but sometimes you just need a guy to come in and hit somebody and get the rebounds and clear out some space. You know, some of the stuff that Sabonis is really good at, Goga did a lot of that in this game. You know, and there are other rookies I want. Kiefer Sykes is a rookie, but he's 28, right? He's not what I'm focusing on here in the young guy section. But O'Shea Brissett also deserves a mention. He's only 23 for his defensive rebounding in this game, right? He's going to have to fill in as the third center going forward. His defense is going to be huge for this team. And he's already proven that he can fit with any lineup. He can space the floor. He can put the ball on the floor, right? He was 0 for 7 in this game, and he still found a way to be impactful and important by driving to the basket and, and drawing some fouls. He got four free throws up and getting those rebounds, getting a steal, getting an assist, right? He has clearly evolved his game and can fit in any iteration of the next Pacers team. Even on a night where he's off shooting, he's still helpful. And despite playing in bench units that were huge minuses, right? Jeremy Lamb's minus 11, Dwayne Washington's minus 13. He was only a minus two because he was able to find ways to be impactful in better units. So another good game from O'Shea Brissett. Dwayne Washington, eight points in a quick burst. He's just such a lethal scorer already hit both of his threes in this game i have no idea what his future holds exactly but he makes quick decisions he's got a good stroke from deep he can get the ball into the paint off the bounce i don't know that he's ever going to be more than a deep bench kind of guy or a micro score kind of guy but clearly in this kind of game showing that he can be that guy at times if they need him to be getting his eight points and filling it up and isaiah jackson i mean burying him at the end seems unfair but the easily the most complete game of his career and, and he showed in this game a little bit of stuff that makes people who want him to play center happy and play the four happy. But I think it's important that he showed both of those skills already because this will allow the Pacers to experiment and let him grow very naturally, right? He showed off some perimeter skills by guarding away from the rim and getting some steals and jumping some passing lights. Three steals that were all just him just in the right place. I'm really athletic. I can get my arm in there and get it and then push and make something happen. They were huge plays in. Sometimes I understand that, you know, if you if you're playing four and you can't shoot, that is somewhat harmful on a team. But if you can guard the other team's guy at your position, there's only so much harm you can do. And you can still be a positive if you're a freak athlete like Jackson is. If he can guard fours, which I think he can with his athleticism and his build and his speed and his defense on the perimeter and on the interior has been lauded by Pacers players and coaches all season. If he can guard fours, I don't really care if he can't shoot. I think he can play the four. And he showed that in this game. He can probably guard <laughs> one three through five right now not one uh three through five right now so that was really impressive on offense just slamming down some lobs hitting a few uh bunnies around the rim i mean th th such a complete game from him obviously any 15 point game looks huge so he showed off a, a nice variety of skills on both ends of the floor that he hadn't really had a chance to in the nba ever to show off before he, he was finding nooks and crannies all over the court and, and running around like like a rookie with all this energy and the way i, I said this earlier but the way he runs just makes it so clear like Joel Embiid did this at Kansas Joel Embiid ran in a way that looked like a guard it made you go wow he could be really smooth if he puts it together when he reaches the NBA and he did and there's lots of other bigs that this applies to 
throughout the process, but Embiid was the first guy really clicked for me that bigs who run like guards tend to be good. And Isaiah Jackson's got that runs like a guard is super fast kind of stuff. His athleticism is just unbelievably eye popping every time I watch him play. So all the young guys stepped up, showed the skills that if they're going to be on the next iteration of the Pacers and help that team be good, how they can do it, right? Isaiah Jackson can play multiple positions and be a defense a defensive mastermind and a good lob threat and Goga can be an enforcer down low and Duarte can be the guy and a good perimeter defender and Dwayne Washington can give you good spot minutes scoring the ball and O'Shea Brissett fits it all together with tidy defense and, and normally good shooting. That's exactly what the Pacers want to see in their situation was this exact kind of game. All of them stepped up, all of them made for a good night in Pacer land. And I want to talk about the two first round picks now in particular, and in particular their play together, not what they look like on the next Pacers team, not how they play tonight, but the whole season, the totality of their minutes, how they have fit together. So let's do that. But first let's talk about the good folks over at built bar because it's the new year, which means it's time for new year's resolutions. And if yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include built bar in your plan. Built bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. They're 100% covered in chocolate, soft and easy to chew protein bars that taste so good. You want to keep eating them despite whatever your resolution is. If you eat healthy, they're perfect for you. They're a good meal replacement. They can be a good snack replacement. Super healthy. Again, 100% covered in chocolate and delicious. So many listeners have told me they've tried them and loved them. 130 calories only, four grams of net sugar, four net carbs, but 17 grams of protein. You've got to try them. Built Bar is absolutely delicious. I love the peanut butter brownie flavor. Go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order of Built Bars. It's not your first order. That's any order at Built.com. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. As always, thanks for making Lockdown Pacers your first listen every day. I hope I can continue to make Lockdown Pacers your first listen every day with interesting insight and insider information about this team. And the insight I got for this one is the numbers behind the Isaiah Jackson, Chris Duarte minutes. And I've talked about a lot on this podcast that in the team in the Pacers situation, which is now a 17 and 29 team, not looking so embarrassing after back to back wins against prominent West opponents. That's still a terrible record. Any team in that situation after 46 games should always be looking with eyes to the future. And that involves, to me at least, finding a way to play Goga every game. Duarte's already playing every game, but putting him in the perfect scenarios, right, where he's either playing with the bench and has the ball a lot, I'm very okay with that being his role, or if he plays with the starters, have him play with the starters a lot so he can really figure out how he fits with those guys. It has to be one or the other. It can't be some bland where sometimes he's in there with guys that might not be on the team in the future and he doesn't have the ball a lot. The Pacers have done pretty well, I think, this year with getting Duarte in the right situations. And now Isaiah Jackson's in the mix. After a game like this, he has to be thought of like, I understood making him a, a a project rookie this year. He's still raw and you know, he was five for 12 in this game. Like obviously he was good, but he still showed some warts. So I'm okay with saying if you find minutes for go every game, it's okay if Isaiah doesn't play, but a game like this makes you think maybe you do have to find a way to play him too. And all of a sudden it's like, well, someone's got to not play to make this happen. And I don't know what that is. Maybe it's Tory Craig plays way less. Maybe Justin holiday plays way less. Maybe they deal away. Some of these guys, that's not the purpose here. There are ways to do it. The purpose here is Isaiah has now reached the point of, for me, of like, maybe they should, along with Goga and Duarte, find a way to play him every game because getting, seeing games, like, obviously, they, this game where they play this much is not tenable for the rest of the season with Pacers' currently constructed roster. It could become that way in a little bit. But if, if they play like this, you have to find a way to see if that can be explored every game. If they can play like this in rotation minutes every game, you can play them every game and still be going for the goals that you currently have. They won playing those guys in that role this game with them playing together. That's why I'm always so interested in this stuff. Like when you're 15 and 29 anyway, you're bad. Play the young guys, obviously. But if they're also capable of helping you win and your goal is to win – they help you either way. It makes all the sense in the world to me. And that is why I want to talk about the Duarte Isaiah Jackson minutes. But prior to tonight, we'd only seen 21 minutes that featured Chris Duarte and Isaiah Jackson at the same time. Only one lineup with or two lineups. No, one lineup with more than three minutes played all season. And it also featured Brad Wanamaker, right? We have not seen a lot of Chris Duarte, Isaiah Jackson. And yet those minutes have gone okay. Really good defense from that group right 47 points a lot on 42 possessions 
43 points scored on 41 possessions. So decent offense. That unit, those units have been really good at manufacturing two pointers, which makes sense. Duarte can get his own inside the arc. Jackson's money around the rim because he's such a good lob throughout, right? That makes sense. Their three point percentage is low. That also makes sense. Duarte kind of forces it from deep. Jackson's a non threat from the outside. That defense kind of surprised me. 42, 47 points on 42 possessions isn't amazing, right? That's a 111.9 defensive rating. It's two rookies. It's not like stunning. I just, that's where they, if they can be good to me, is on defense. They can really link up and be a really good uh, partnership defending the pick and roll or keeping guys out of the paint or whatever. They are capable of doing a lot on defense, I think. So it's only 42 possessions. That's blowing a lot of smoke. But I think those units with both of those guys, I mean, their skills are pretty complementary. That it makes sense that them plus one shooter and one really good ball handler and a big or one shooter, one really good ball handler and like a, a wing with some size like Torrey Craig. Like that all makes sense to me as a unit that would fit together. So investigating these minutes and what's made them good or bad. And first of all, that they're not shooting the three very well is a big part of the reason why they haven't been so awesome. But they've only conceded 14% from deep, and yet they have that terrible defensive rating. So this group, those two have not been awesome on defense together at all. They've conceded some pretty rough shot quality stuff, typical rookie stuff, but that that's where they needed to improve, and that's where they were better in this game. We saw eight minutes and 41 seconds. Uh, of excuse me, eight minutes and 33 seconds of a lineup that featured Duarte, Jackson, Holiday, Craig, and Sykes, right? So that's kind of what I just described of the shooter, the wing, and the ball handler. That group played eight minutes and 33 seconds in this game. True shooting percentage of 50%, only one for three from deep. Still did okay. Uh, they gave up 19 points and scored 16, so they're a minus three. But see, exploring those units more, that, that group played a lot in the fourth quarter of this game after the Pacers had already kind of accumulated their lead exploring more of that group to me is going to be key for the Pacers in the next couple weeks because they have an opportunity that they wouldn't have had prior to the trade deadline without these injuries to see what rook, how the rookies can fit together right now. See how they fit together right now. Do you want to have this, this, you know, it's, it's only going to be a very short amount of time. Like, I don't know how long Sabonis is going to be out. Carlisle did not make it seem today. Like it's going to be super long or anything when he was asked about a pregame, but if it's more than a week or so, I mean, you're getting, four or five games of just, okay, here are two rookies together over and over and over again. If they look great or if they look kind of connected and that you can figure out the blueprint for what fits around them way faster. And all of a sudden you could change, it could change your timeline. You could decide to move up and try to be more aggressive in pursuing next year's success instead of maybe two years from now or three years from now. Right. And they're already probably going to push for a little success next year. Cause they'll still have Brogdon and one of the bigs, whatever. But you know, the, the, these coming weeks, are useful evaluation periods for these units that have had shown some success at getting to the rim at defending pick and roll actions at, at getting other teams to shoot uncomfortable shots. Like seeing how these units do together, I think with Duarte and Jackson is going to be really something crucial for the Pacers in the coming weeks. And this game was just the start of it. Eight and a half minutes of those two on the floor at the same time. When before this game, they'd only played 21 minutes together total across 45 games is a big step in the right direction for a team that had won 16 out of 45 coming into this game. So the numbers aren't necessarily glamorous, and that makes sense. There's two rookies on the floor at the same time. Rookies don't tend to be that good, but it's the steps in the right direction that the Pacers need to be taking, and it's something they'll have to monitor going forward, and I certainly will be on this show. So please come and listen every day. Next week, of course, we'll be talking about whatever happened this weekend on this road trip and looking ahead at some other games. I believe next Monday's guest is going to be Kevin Bowen from 1075 fan in the morning show so it comes to ground if you like kevin bowen that'll be super fun thank you all for listening hope you all have a great weekend and we will see you tomorrow